The AC football team heads to Houston to begin the Southland Conference season. I'm Hannah Null. And I'm Grant Boone. We'll look back at a record-setting Shotwell shootout and get you ready for ACU and Houston Baptist. It's the Ken Collum Show right now. Welcome to week three of the Ken Collins Show from the JMC Network Studios at Abilene Christian University. I'm Grant Boone alongside ACU junior journalism major Hannah Null and the head football coach at ACU Ken Collins. Coach, after a couple of very competitive non-conference games, you begin the Southland season on the road tonight against the Houston Baptist Huskies. How much have these last two weeks prepared your team for what is going to be a nine-game gauntlet beginning tonight. Yeah, it's nine straight conference games, and, you know, we needed two tough games to get us going. You got them. Uh, that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got so many new guys that we're, we're figuring out different spots, little nuances, how they fit in the, the offense and the defense. So, uh, as you can tell, I, I think we were competitive in, in game one, and we played a you know, fairly good game against uh, Northern Colorado, and we just got to keep improving. We got a lot. We got a long way to go. Coach, Dallas Sealy broke an ACU record against Northern Colorado with four rushing touchdowns. In the past, you've primarily had a passing offense for the most part. How is it nice to have a little variety out there? It sure is, and I don't know that they were like technically rushing touchdowns. They were quarterback sneaks, and it, but but you one were of, a rushing quarterback. Yes, this does, but, not, but, not Ken Collins. But I don't vintage. know that I ever had a a run like a quarter a forty nine yard quarterback sneak. That was pretty cool. And uh, but you know what? It speaks to Dallas's competitiveness. Uh, and his talent level, He's, he, is, he is learning how to play the position, but you could tell uh, last Saturday night, he's a fierce competitor. And it earned him that performance, Southland Conference Offensive Player of the Week honors. When we come back, we'll have highlights and the coach's analysis of a wild one at Shotwell Stadium last Saturday night. Stay with us. It's the Ken Collins Show. With ACU playing its final season at Shotwell Stadium, we're looking back each week on the Ken Collins Show at a memorable moment from the home of the Wildcats. Today's final shot takes us back to 1976 and a performance that only a mutter could love on the sloppy Shotwell surface real grass back then, remember. Jim Reese threw for 564 yards in a win over Angelo State. That remains the all-time ACU record for passing yards in a single game. Well, last Saturday night at Shotwell, Dallas Seeley set another ACU quarterback record with his feet. With the highlights from the ACU and Northern Colorado game, here's Jonathan Rates. ACU started the game aggressively as redshirt sophomore Dallas Seeley bounced a fourth and one quarterback sneak around the left side and went 49 yards to give the Wildcats a 7-0 lead on their opening drive. Northern Colorado wasted no time responding as Kyle Sloiter found Hakeem Deggs from 26 yards out to tie it at 7, just 2 minutes and 15 seconds into the contest. After a punt by the Wildcats on their second drive, Northern Colorado's Trey Reich capped off a 6-play, 67-yard drive with a 3-yard run. The Bears followed up that scoring drive with a 22-yard TD reception from Stephen Miller and a 37-yard connection between Sloiter and Alex Wesley to take a 28-7 lead, with 14 minutes left to play in the first half. On the Wildcats' ensuing possession, Seeley responded in a big way as he went 2-for-2 two two for 61 yards and a touchdown as he found Juco transfer DJ Fuller in the corner of the end zone to put the score at 28-14. After allowing 28 points in the first 16 minutes of the game, the ACU defense hunkered down and forced consecutive punts. Seeley coupled that with two more touchdowns on the ground and the Wildcats tied the game at 28-28 with a minute and 27 seconds left in the first half. But after allowing 21 unanswered points to the Wildcats, Northern Colorado found the end zone on a 20-yard pass from Sloiter to Reek to take a 35-28 halftime lead. 
The Bears continued to move the ball efficiently in the second half, and on their opening drive, Sloiter scrambled around the right side for a 22-yard touchdown, giving Northern Colorado a 42-28 lead. However, ACU's offense needed just a single play to respond as senior Adrian Duncan scampered 46 yards to the end zone, cutting the lead to 42-35. After a crafty third down conversion, Sloiter continued to find the end zone through the air as he connected with his tight end Michael McCauley from nine yards out. But the extra point was blocked, leaving the score at 48 to 35. With momentum from the blocked PAT, the Wildcats responded with an eight play 75 yard drive, which was set up by a 50 yard pass hauled in by junior Troy Grant and ended with a Sealy one yard touchdown. Trailing 48 to 42, the ACU defense came up with the first turnover of the game as junior Sam Denmark stepped in front of Sloiter's pass, setting up the offense with an opportunity to take the lead. <laughs> ACU took advantage of that opportunity with a nine-play, 38-yard drive that was capped off by a two-yard run from redshirt freshman Tracy James with one minute and 51 seconds left in the third. Two possessions later, ACU recovered a Northern Colorado fumble at the six-yard line with a chance to add to their lead. Unable to get into the end zone after the turnover, AC settled for a 21-yard field goal from redshirt junior Nick Grau to push the lead to 52-48. But Northern Colorado would score the final points of the game on a Wesley 59-yard reception from Sloiter to take the lead at 55-52. Okay, Jonathan, thanks. Final score, 55-52 in favor of Northern Colorado. Coach, the game really couldn't have started much better. You take the opening kickoff, you get about to midfield, you decide to go for it on fourth and about a yard from the 49-yard line. You get the yard on the quarterback sneak from Dallas Seeley and 48 more. What happened on that play? Well, it's just a, an example of the defense being over-aggressive in what they were doing. They were pinching to the middle and they over-pursued and Dallas kept his feet moving, spun out, and then ran for a touchdown. It's pretty cool. It was cool. You took a 7-0 lead. They come back, Coach, 28 unanswered points, and their quarterback, starting quarterback, Jacob Nip, got knocked out on the first series. Kyle Sloter came in, a fifth-year senior and a, a, an experienced guy, and played really, really well. Takes a 28-7 lead on you. Then you get a special teams play from D.J. Fuller. Big kick return. Two plays later, you're in the end zone. Fuller made the catch on the touchdown. We've, we've seen back-to-back breakout games from D.J. Fuller. He's as good as you were advertising him to be in that fall camp. What is it that makes D.J. the transfer from Chicago so good? Well, number one, it's his instincts. When you have a kick returner or a punt returner that just naturally does the right things, that's a really good thing because a lot of that you can't teach. Mm. You, just, you, can, you can coach them through it throughout the week, but things happen so fast. It's split-second decisions, and it comes down to instincts. Uh, he's an instinctive returner. He's an instinctive receiver playing the ball down the field, and the fact that he can really run, that, that helps him. Special teams gave and special teams took away for you. You, you tied the game at 28, and... It seemed all the momentum was in favor of the Wildcats, but then less than a minute ago in the first half, you force another punt. The defense seemed to be getting itself right. right, and then you get a roughing the punter call. Looked like a good call from my perspective. You're going for the block there. They then go down and score with less than 12 seconds to go. Games like this, fairly evenly matched team special teams seem like they always show up. Yeah, you're exactly right. And the the fact is, our special teams played really well overall. We just had a couple of mistakes, but you never know, and we talked about this on, uh, on Monday after the game, you never know when those defining moments are going to take place, so you've got to be honed in and focused on every single snap. Uh, you know, at the, end of the, at the end of the first half, our defense really had it going. They, they, were, they were getting the ball back to us. Uh, we were scoring, and then we thought we were going to have one more run at it to, uh, to, to go ahead. And, uh, and didn't do it. They made a special teams mistake, and they took advantage of it. Second half was back and forth the whole way, and it just seemed like who might get the ball last. Incredibly, the final 10 minutes of the game, no one scored. She had 107 points scored the first 50 minutes of the game. Came down to a fourth and two for your team. And, and in a game where you know each team had over 600 yards or 550 yards of offense, 
Isn't it interesting that, that one defensive play can sometimes be the difference? Yeah. If we had so many yards, you'd think we could get two more. You know, right. Just, just as, a, as a fan watching. But they did a good job uh, on that play. Uh, we weren't quite, quite as clean as we, sh we, uh, we should have been. And, uh, you know, therefore, we didn't get it done. It was a, a thrilling game. You guys got to stop on fourth and less than half a yard and, and forced to turn over that way. It wasn't enough. ACU falls 55 to 52. We will preview the Southland Conference opener against Houston Baptist tonight in just a bit. But as we go to break, take a look at some of the scores from around the Southland Conference last week, including Nichols' near upset of the century between the Hedges at Georgia. Stay with us on The Ken Collins Show. isn't the only team at ACU starting conference play this weekend. Here's Max Preston with a look at more ACU sports. Thanks, Hannah. Soccer had another two-game weekend facing Oklahoma State Friday losing 2 to nothing, and SMU on Sunday losing that game 6 to 1. Sophomore Sophie Standifer scored the only goal of the weekend against SMU, snapping the Mustang streak of shutouts against Southland Conference teams. Senior goalie Sidney Newton had 12 saves over the weekend, putting her season total at 27. The women will now head into conference with their first match coming against Texas A&M Corpus Christi on Saturday. Volleyball was in action again this weekend at the Texas Tech Tournament where they were swept in three matches, all resulting in three nothing set scores. Sophomore J.C. Smith had 20 kills over the three matches while freshman Amanda Chapa tallied 34 digs. The team will travel all the way to Boca Raton, Florida this weekend for the final pre-conference tournament of the season. The tennis teams will divide and try to conquer this weekend as they begin their fall season. Half of the men and women's tennis teams will participate in the Midland Racquet Club Invitational, facing such schools as Texas Tech, Texas A&M, and Rice. The women will be led by senior Aaron Walker and junior Whitney Williams. The other half of the women's team will go to the Greater Cincinnati Invitational in Ohio, and the rest of the men will go to Las Cruces for the New Mexico State Invitational. 2015 freshman standout Josh Sheehy will get to play alongside his brother Jonathan, who was a four-star recruit who signed with ACU last year. That does it for this week's sportscast. For JMC Network Sports, I'm Max Preston. Thanks, Max. It's common for college football teams to receive dozens of walk-ons every season, but it's rare that these players ever receive playing time. ACU senior running back Adrian Duncan came to the Wildcats as a walk-on in 2013 and has played in some big games. Coming in to score the winning touchdown against Troy and receiving his first collegiate start in 2014 against Incarnate Word, Adrian has definitely improved throughout the years. In the two games the Wildcats have played so far, he's already gained more rushing yards than he has in any previous season. In preparation for the game against HBU, Adrian shared a little more about his time at ACU and what helps keep him motivated. Yeah, so one of my most memorable moments was uh, when we played Troy a couple years back. Uh, Herschel and DeAndre went down and uh, they called my name to go in and try to finish off the game. We were right there in there uh, and I got to score the winning touchdown. Had some great blocking up front, some great blocking from our fullbacks and tight ends. So that was awesome. That was a really awesome moment. Uh, everybody was just in that moment with me. The locker room afterwards, it was crazy. It was just a really exciting moment for me. Not too many walk-ons get to say that they got to play their freshman year, uh, their true freshman year. And it was just uh, very honoring that they called me to be able to uh, go in there and play running back and actually just help my team out as a freshman. It was really exciting. Um, it was very nerve-wracking, but uh, had great people around me that helped support me and really encouraged me. Some of my biggest supporters are my parents. They've always been there for me. They've made it really easy uh, coming to college and uh, playing collegiate football because even my freshman year when I was playing uh, just at the end of games, you know, they were still there. And even when I didn't play, they still traveled. They traveled all the way to Troy, even though they didn't know I was going to play or not. And that's just awesome to have that. And they've always been that way. And it's just really encouraging to me because they, I know that no matter what I do, they're always going to have my back. And no matter what troubles I'm going through, they're there supporting me. And sometimes when I get my head down, you know, uh, every player has that moment. They're just right there encouraging me and just tell me to stay in it, keep doing what I do. And that really just just helps me and allows me just to go back out there and keep performing. So versus Houston Baptist, we were really looking to have a strong running game to open up the passing and uh, just different aspects. And we didn't have too strong of a running game versus Air Force, but we really opened it up this past week versus UNC. And the coaches, uh, Coach Freeman and Coach Young, 
had a great game plan coming out of halftime, and it was hitting just like that. So we're really trying to adjust some things and uh, make sure that we have a good running game versus Houston Baptist so we can air it out whenever we get those guys sucking in. Dallas really has some good feet, so that's another running back pretty much back there. And our defense is just going to fly around and hit people like they do. They're going to play fast and physical and uh, just play really exciting. When we come back, we'll see what Coach Collins has planned to get down with the dogs. Stay with us right here on the Ken Collins Show. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show. Take a look at this week's Southland Conference schedule. Ten of the 11 teams in the league are in action. All are playing a conference game. Central Arkansas and Incarnate Word currently tied for first at 1-0 in the Southland Conference standings. Well, tonight in Houston, it's cats and dogs as ACU and Houston Baptist University square off at Husky Stadium. ACU is 0-2 for the season. HBU is 1-1, coming off a 24-20 victory over Texas Southern last week. A touchdown in the final four minutes got it done for the Huskies. The Wildcats have had their way with HBU in the first three meetings, outscoring them 177-47. Coach, it's, it's just their third official season as a football program. But you've told me you've seen some things on film and in the last couple of years when we played them that Coach Vic Sheely has done that, that have impressed you, haven't you? Sure. Like what we've done in the past against HBU, you can throw that out the window. Uh, they, are, they were competitive in the league last year. Mm -hmm. You could tell they made a big jump last year. They were, they were playing some hotly contested games. As, as, you know, as, as they beat Texas Southern last week, that was, that was, a, that was a great matchup, and they figured out how to, how to win the game. So... Uh, they're much improved. They've got some playmakers. They've got some running backs. They've got a, multiple running backs that can make plays, some good-looking receivers that they throw the ball to, and, uh, and some guys that can run and hit and cover on defense. And so we're going to have to go down and play a good game in order to win. Coach, offensively, the guys are really starting to come together. But that first and fourth quarter, there still isn't a whole lot of scoring going on. So what are your expectations going in? Like, what do you want to see the guys improve on to make sure you secure that lead earlier? Well, just to play with more consistency. Uh, you could see, you know, our first our first drive ended with an unbelievable quarterback sneak, 49 yards, and then we would get a first down and then punt, and then every now and then we'd go three and out, but then we picked it up in the second quarter. So there are spurts there, and what was what was interesting about last game was they made big time runs on us, and then we turned the turned the table and made big time runs on them. You can't do that uh, to and sustain and, and beat good teams. So we simply need to take a deep breath focus on where we're supposed to be, the exact split, the exact depth of the route, the exact step of each lineman. And uh, if we do that, we, you, you, can, you, can, you can create some consistency, and that's all we need. I think we've got enough talent to, to compete in this league, but you can't be so up and down. Success and failure within a drive often can come down to just a, a little, a, a half a yard one way or the other. That's exactly right. It's 11 on 11, and there's so many things that can happen within each play. If 10 of the 11 do right, you might get away with it, but sometimes you don't, and, and, and some of that showed up. Coach, your defense has given up a lot of yards the first couple of games. I know just the statistical yardage really isn't most important to you. What have you seen this week in terms of practice that, that give you confidence that, that your team can rebound after last week? Well, the first thing you do is you look at what goes on way deeper than just meetings, just the practice field. You look at the weight room, mm. and that that's where that's where champions get it done. And uh, Coach Burke and, and his staff grind those guys, and they respond. If you've got a team coming off a loss or a win, who goes to the weight room and and, and takes their foot off the gas, you you got a problem on your hands. That's that's the beginning of something really big. But uh, we don't. We've 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 dropped two games. We've we've struggled on defense at times with consistency and on offense also. But uh, our guys have responded in the weight room and they're responding on the practice field. So uh, I think we're in a good spot to go down there and have a good game. Like Grant mentioned, you're three and zero against HBU. Do you think any of your guys are going in a little overconfident? This week? I would certainly hope not. Uh, going in 0 and 2. It is human uh, nature, though, isn't it? It, it, a bit? it, it is. Uh, I don't. I don't anticipate that. Uh, and and shame on us if we even think about being overconfident mm -hmm. at this point, uh, because those guys, those guys beat a beat a Texas Southern team, and, mm -hmm. and that was. And they play, had to play well to do it. It came down to the wire. Mm -hmm. Well. It's Houston Baptist, big alumni gathering at 5 o'clock before the game, and we're bringing in a heavy hitter into the press box <laughs> to work the broadcast with me. We've got none other than 
JBL, John Bradshaw Layfield, a former All-America offensive lineman, will join me for the radio broadcast. We're on the air at 7 o'clock. Pre-game show begins at 6.30 on 98.1 FM. The ticket in Abilene and around the world on acusports.com should be a big night down in H-Town. For Hannah Knoll and for Coach Ken Collins, I'm Grant Boone. Enjoy the game, and we'll see you next week right here on The Ken Collins Show.